Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Sundage of the Manifesting Through Music Con uh, conference. And today we have a very special guest. Her name is Diane. And I just want to let her introduce herself and tell you all about her experience in the industry before we get started. So thank you so much, Diane, for being here. Just tell the, everyone a little bit about who you are and what you do and how you serve the artist, artist community. Okay. Hi, I am Diane Foy. And I just always believe that artists have the power to heal, transform, and elevate lives. And that's been my purpose in my many careers is just always to help artists succeed and step into that power. And my background, I was a entertainment publicist for 16 years, mostly music and some film and actors. And uh, now I coach artists through personal branding because through publicity, too many artists skip that and they go straight to marketing and promotion without first really focusing on personal branding and content creation and social media and so now I realize like I could coach artists through that so I love it because it's deep inner work and it's the work that we all want to skip but it's so important and then it becomes we do our creativity for a deeper purpose you know, musicians, especially like you put your whole heart and soul into your music. And now you just need to also put that out there as you, your brand, tell your stories and not only tell your stories in your music. So I feel like one of the reasons why artists kind of skip over that part is because they see a narrative on Instagram reels and on TikToks about what they think sharing their story looks like. And the misconception is, oh, you have to dance or you have to be weird. You know what I mean? And I feel like that um, that's the general story people have. So what what are some things that artists can do to tell their stories in a in a in an aligned and authentic way instead of versus doing what they see everybody else doing because they feel like they need to do that to be successful? Right. And you don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Um, because it's you know, if I started dancing and pointing it, it's just not me. I would look fake. And so don't do that if that's not you. I mean, you have to push your comfort zone a little. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on video at all. So I'm pushing my comfort zone <laughs> on video, but I'm not trying to be anything other than who I am. And, you know, the trends have actually shifted. People are getting sick of the trends. People are getting sick of the dancing around videos. And, and when you do the same thing as everyone else, you don't stand out. And so just go on video and just be you, you know, it might be a challenge to figure out the video editing and trying to get it down short, but I think I'd rather it be longer and really connect with you and long form video, I think is becoming more popular again, because people are tired of the, the short little bits that don't really tell you anything. Um, and yeah, and I think a lot of artists shy away from branding because they think it will be putting a brand on you that's not you and that you're not comfortable with. And mm -hmm. sure, back in the day, or I'm sure it still happens today, if you get like a major label deal, yeah, they sometimes put that brand on you if you are you don't know better. And so I'm all about authenticity and that's why it takes some deep inner work because it's, it's a challenge. It's hard to really put yourself out there and show who you are and be okay with whatever judgment or anything that comes your way, it, but it's part of the territory. You're so eager to get your music out there. You're so eager to build your audience, but slow down. <laughs> That's what I tell artists, slow down. And if you do it right, it's a slow build. But then every new fan that you work to get, 
that they're true fans. They get you. They're going to be loyal to you. And that's why I say, you know, you're attracting your super fans. How do you attract your super fans? It is by showing who you really are. You know, if an artist, if I'm listening to, you know, a few different artists and I love the music equally, the one that kind of tells me more about them and who they are and if I connect to them in a more personal way or I just love the way they dress and their personality, I'm going to be more loyal to that artist than the artist that kind of hides behind it. And okay, no matter how much I love that song, I'm going to, I'm not connected. This is taking that, figuring out what, what it is you really want. Why do you want it? Exploring your core values, exploring those limiting beliefs that we all have that hold us back from really putting ourselves out there. And it's figuring out, you know, exploring your personality. What parts of your personality shine and what parts of your personality do you want to maybe work on? Or what situations make you shine? You know, some people might be fantastic on video but maybe they are awkward at a event and networking in person or the other way around some people are great networking at, at that event but tell them to do a video or something they're like ah. <laughs> so it's ex just exploring like where you shine and let's put you in those positions that you shine and maybe work on those areas that you don't or that's where you can you know, if you lack certain skills that wait, that's where you start building your team. But uh, it's so important to just really figure out and it's figuring out your story for your bio, mm -hmm. but also for social media. But I would first explore your story, your story timeline. And when I work with clients, the most powerful session is the why session. It's really digging deep of why you do what you do, why you want this. And usually the first answer to why do you do what you do is, is kind of superficial. Like for me, I could say, because I've always just loved arts and entertainment. Well, why? Because if that's all it is, it's too easy to quit when the struggles come up. But if you can de dig deeper, and I work with artists and get to that deep inner, usually sometimes it's a childhood event or something really impacted you. And if you're a musician, probably music changed your life in some way or had a great impact on you. And now you want to do music because you want to have that impact on someone else. And that's kind of what I, why I do what I do, because I say artists have the power to heal, transform, and elevate. Well, arts and entertainment has done that for me. When No matter what's going on in the world, we escape to the world that creatives and artists create for us. And so I'm so passionate about it. That's why I do what I do. And that's why I don't want you to quit the artists because it's so important. And if, you know, things are holding you back from really putting yourself out there or Maybe it's a lack of knowledge of, I don't know how to do that. Well, let's, let's figure it out, you know, um, through all the artists that I've worked with, I think fear and a lack of knowledge has been the main things. They might phrase it in different ways, but it always comes down to some kind of fear and a lack of knowledge of what holds them back of why they're not where they want to be. So my work is tackling that it's tackling that fear tackling that lack of knowledge okay I love that you know uh, this really resonates with me and I'm taking notes if you see me looking down but I really like that you said fear and lack of knowledge because there were a lot of times where I wanted to quit yeah. and there were really it was music that kept me going. Cause when I was a little girl, I was very much an introvert, like to the point where sometimes I wouldn't even talk. Like people would say, hi, how are you? And I would just look at them and be terrified, <laughs> you know, social anxiety. Me too. So, <laughs> 
So I felt so alone, but every time I listened to music, I felt connected, I felt alive. And that's what made me want to create. Because when I couldn't express myself fully to other people, I felt like the music was able to relay a message that at the time I was not able to do. Like the right. artist was speaking for me and speaking up for me. So, um, you know, but that can be a scary process just sharing that. And then also too, like once you get comfortable with sharing that, then you have to learn, okay, this is the business side. This is what, you know, these are the legal parts. We, it's a business. So you, you have your passion, but then you have to put things in place to protect your creative work. So um, that was really the whole purpose of me hosting this conference is to educate not only myself, but the other artists who are tuning in. And then also to learn once you, because like, like you said, once you learn what it is you need to know, it's not so scary because you have a step-by-step -step process or you have somebody to hold your hand or you have a plan that now you can execute because of the knowledge that you've gained. So can you just tell us about your process when it comes to branding, whether it's how to build up your story, which you touched on that a little bit already by knowing the why, um, but then also how, like what, after you know how to build the story, how do they then connect with you to put all the pieces together? when they are ready to put it out to the world. Right. And so I created the super fan attraction method because I know I've figured out the steps and I'll get, cause I'm my publicity experience. Everyone wants to get straight to let's do publicity. I'll get you there, but I refuse to jump there anymore because it's not going to do anyone any favors by jumping there. And so the, there's three stages to the super fan attraction method, and it all starts with that personal branding. Once I talked a little bit about, you know, the different parts, personal branding, your why, your story, your personality, your image. Like I also have a makeup and fashion background. So it's your image. I was a photographer and makeup artist. So your photos that represent you. That's important. That's part of personal branding. You know, too many artists just show up at a photo shoot. Okay, I need photos. <laughs> no real plan. <laughs> but you do that work to really get clear on who you are, what you represent, what you want those photos to look like. You want someone to look at a photo and really get your whole vibe, whether it's the colors you wear, like I love color psychology. Uh, what colors you wear or what colors you use in your branding that all contributes to someone's impression of you but once you have that then then it's also figuring out what makes you unique it's what is your unique combination of skills talent personality and what makes you different from other artists I mean, we're all completely different. It's just narrowing in and figuring out what makes you unique, what your unique combination is. And once you figure that out, then it's figuring out who's most likely to appreciate that. And that goes into target market, target audience, and your ideal super fan. Um, so you could, once you, then it's figuring out who your ideal super fan is. And there's techniques that I, I teach of how to do that research. Um, and then where are they? If you're thinking, okay, I got to do social media, where are the people that you want to target? Are they on pretty much TikTok and that's all they really do? Well, then you got to focus on TikTok. If it's Instagram, Instagram. For some people, it's LinkedIn. You know, it's like depends on where your audience is most of the time online and that's your focus content okay we figured that out next stage two is purpose-driven content then it's creating content to share your story to share who you are to share your work yes you will share hey check out my new video or check out my new song but tell me more than that. 
like for the content creation, it's make sure to start documenting your life. Because a lot of artists, they go in their creative bubble, they're spending all this time in the recording studio or making the videos and doing all this stuff, and they ignore social media. And then when they have something to release, they're like, oh, I got to go spam email everyone <laughs> or spam, <laughs> look at my stuff. You have to build that relationship all year long and connect with people more than just check out my song. Tell me the story behind it. Show me some video footage of you in the recording studio recording it. Shoot your producer and why you chose that producer. What was the impact of the song? What, you know, tell me stories about your work behind the scenes in addition to who you are as an artist, who you are as a person. What are your hobbies outside of that? We kind of all have to be an open book these days. <laughs> We're all like spilling everything about ourselves on there online. But if you are clear on your purpose, it doesn't feel as bragging because if you're telling a story about you, always think about why does that story matter to someone that's reading it or listening to it or, you know, looking at it. Um, so if you always come from that purpose and that's, what's going to connect to people. And so let's say like your favorite artists, you love them more than just their music. You love their personality. You tell the stories they tell, you connect to them on some deep level. And then that makes you a super fan. Cause I'm going to support everything you do. Um, once you get me. And so the content creation, it doesn't matter the platform. Like I'm more will help my clients figure out the content creation, how to shape your stories into an ideal caption for a photo that you put together or how to explain that, tell that story in a quick and snappy way because of the short attention spans on video. Um, and then the platform becomes, okay, I got this content, now how to distribute it. And once you, I guess another part of the content is engaging. It's like not just putting out all your info and all this content, but you have to make an effort to find those ideal super fans, potential super fans, and start commenting on their stuff start DMing them, start, you know, always make a point of starting conversations with them. Anyone that comments on your stuff, always respond. And that, it gets a two-way street and that draws people in. And once you have that going, then is the perfect time for publicity. They just want to see if you're going to stick around before they invest their resources into you. So there's so much that goes on to that. I could talk for two hours, three hours. Yes. No, this is so good. I love too how you said it's important not to rush. Cause I think so many of us are like, I just wanted to blow up. Like I just wanted to go viral and you know, whatever happens after that, that they feel is a milestone or, um, some type of indication of success. But I think that a lot of mistakes can be avoided. And, you know, like you said, that slow build helps you to get a full picture and to give your audience a full picture, to really give yourself time to determine this is how I want my audience to see me. This is what I want my show. So, you know, so that mm -hmm. long term, people can look back and say, I remember, you know, when this person started and they were doing this, and I've seen them grow and develop and evolve. Um, you know, in beautiful ways, like we watch some of our favorite artists do as well. So you know, um I've been around the music industry for 20 years and or more. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> and so I've seen it all and I know what it takes. And I'm also, I'm an introvert as well. So I understand the not wanting to put yourself out there, but you know, the more you do it, the more comfortable you're, you are with it. 
I remember the first time I I put even just the now if I look back at it it's not personal at all but at the time I thought just sharing anything was so huge to me that oh my god I just put my heart and soul out there <laughs> but the more you do it the more you get comfortable with it and the more you can push yourself and also another reason not to skip steps and jump to the end is it's all your work in progress you don't want your first interview to be rolling stone come on <laughs> and so you want to start with the smaller outlets and get used to speaking and being interviewed and telling your stories and and on a less risky scale do the smaller podcasts and do all this type of thing and then you'll have your stories down and by the time you get to the bigger outlets you'll be a pro so thank you so much for sharing your process your services your knowledge and your freebie so everyone who is tuning into this segment make sure you're registered because at the end i'm going to share all the free resources including the one that you mentioned with your mini course on personal branding so um thank you once again diane and please just let everyone know what's the best way for them to reach you if they want to connect with you after they watch this video um so i'm at Diane Foy Arts on most socials. Um, I do have a group, a super fan attraction group on Facebook. And my email is diane at dianefoy.com uh, if you want to get me directly. But I'd say first go through that free resource, the training, and then you can also book like a one on one with me, an introductory session that's free and see if we're a fit to work together maybe we're not um but it's you know it's an introductory session where we can talk about what your challenges are and where you want to go and if i'm the right person for you and uh go from there okay great thank you again so much again for your time and we'll see you all in the next segment bye